Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. Good morning, afternoon, wherever you're watching from. Um, happy Friday. It's Friday. Friday before Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Really going to kick off the holiday season. Um, so excited today to talk about workflows and some optimization hacks to ease your workday. Um, super excited to have Rachel here. I'm sure you guys are well aware of her beautiful face, but if you aren't, then <laughs> introducing the queen of social media um, and top marketing consultant. So excited to learn from her today and dive into it. We're going to dive in. This is going to be pretty awesome. You're going to want to save this video, so make sure to like it, save the link, etc. because the things that I'm going to share today are not just related to Q4 or the holiday marketing. Some of them are, but many of them are going to have principles and time-saving workflows that can help you each and every day. Drop a yes if you like to save time with workflows, optimizations, new ways of handling time as it comes to or relates to creating content, posting content, etc. I'm willing to bet there will be a ton of yeses in the comments because if you're anything like me, you like things to be efficient, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All right. So the very first one that I'm going to share, who here has, this is going to relate most to uh, marketing directors, social media managers, whether you're with a company or working with clients. Um, who here has clients that constantly revise or make suggestions after you post stuff and it kind of drives you a little bit nuts where they're like i wouldn't say it like that actually can you change it to be like this i don't actually like this graphic etc who's ever worked with a client or uh, a company like that this is something we've probably all experienced at some point in time and for those particular clients, by the way, I want to say particular instead of other words, because there are certain industries and platforms where it really and truly makes sense for them to be really particular. Some industries can only use certain words. Some uh, individual platforms for growth require <laughs> things to sound more like them, right? Yeah. And they're just very particular about the way that they want things to be. I love that Liz is like, particular. Yes, particular. Um, okay, so um, this is a really important content workflow. It's time-saving. It's amazing. If you are a business owner and you plan on having people do your marketing and you are also particular, which many of us don't even realize we are until it actually unfolds and you hire someone and you're like, oh, not like that. Oh, oh shoot, that's wrong. Um, I want to share with you guys a really fast workflow. Actually, Aniston's going to show this. So this is a fantastic tool directly from Metricool. It is content approval systems. Drop a yes if you please. <laughs> Who would like to be able to submit a, a plan for posts or have submitted to you a plan for posts where there are approvals, rejections, not the bad way, just go ahead and change this. <laughs> so take it away, Aniston, for this first time-saving workflow. Okay, so super excited to announce this. Um, this has been a product that's been in the works for the past uh, like nine-ish months. Um, so really excited that this is out. Um, to access this, you're gonna head into the planning section of Metricool, so you'll see the calendar. And then when you go to create a new post, um, you can you know, up top highlight the social media icons where you wanna post to. I'm just gonna do a Twitter X post, for example. Um, so Metricool content approval system. 
and you can you know schedule it the same way that you always do so schedule your content and then down here you'll see a drop down menu so you'll see save as draft center review save and schedule or publish now so if you want to send it off for review you're going to select send to review and then go ahead and send it and then this is where you will select the users or reviewers that you want so if you have a client or another team member that you want to send it to, um, I'm just going to send it to Alex, <laughs> already selected. Um, and then you can choose the option of how you want this approval to work. So, you know, if there doesn't need to be a reviewer, then you, once you send it off, um, if there's no action made, then it will go ahead and already be published and posted for when you scheduled it or you can select at least one reviewer must approve. So if you have multiple reviewers, if at least one approves it, then it's good to go, or all reviewers must approve it. So this really allows you to select, um, you know, what works best for you, for your client, for your team. So then once you go off and send it, it'll send. Um, and then I'll show you the back end of what it looks like for, um, approval. So you'll see this, my tasks section. So this is in the um, top right, right hand corner. So my tasks, you'll see a little notif notification button. Um, and then all of the open um, content that is up for approval, you will also see pending of approval. So those that need to be approved, um, any rejections, and then any past approved content. So you can see I can go into here, um, look at this post for Facebook. If I wanna click into the actual post inside the planner, I can see that too. I can see how it, you know, how it looks on mobile, desktop. And then I can either click to reject or approve. If I were to reject it, um, you can add in a note. So this allows you to, you know, add your feedback, which changes need to happen. Um, you can also reject without a note if needed but really just makes it easy um, to communicate with your team member, with your client when doing this workflow without meaning to jump between platforms. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm just gonna show also uh, some new roles and permissions that we have. So we have created some um, default, some set roles. So we have client, content creator, analyst, editor, and manager. Um, so these all have different permissions of what they can access. Um, and if, but if you want to create a more customized role and say, you know, you want your client to access not only analytics, but be able to approve content, maybe be able to actually schedule content themselves, whatever you need, um, you can add a specific role and toggle on which permissions they have. So really just makes it, you know, customizable to you, your brand, whatever you need with your content approvals. So that is the quick rundown. Um, really exciting stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. All right, who's excited about that? I think it's pretty neat. Yes. So we're gonna dive into um, six more time-saving workflows. That one right there can save you so much time on back and forth versus the whole like client hopping into Slack and copying the link to a post and being like, can you revise this? And now you have to take it down, et cetera. If you've ever been through that workflow, boo, this is <laughs> way better. Um, Metrical, can you guys add the link to join Metrical for anyone who's like, I need this in my life? Yes. All right. Now this next time-saving workflow is really, really important because it's the domino for the rest, okay? Who here has ever gone to create content, whether it's emails or social posts or uh, scripts for videos? And before you know it, you're 17 videos into TikTok, two YouTube videos in, you are stalking several Insta celebrities and you can't even remember <laughs> <laughs> what you came here to do. Who here knows exactly what I'm talking about? <laughs> this is a dangerous cycle that sucks up so much time. I know it does for me, and I guarantee you it does for others as well. Um, one of the big things that you can do to really and truly combat this is to 
separate your modes of content creation. I love this. I love that a few people are like, yep, 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 been there. Um, separate your modes of creation. And really and truly, there are eight modes for content creation that I want you to actually take notes on. Okay. So I'm going to share these eight modes. And the reason that this is important is because not all of these modes require you to hop into the internet or just start browsing in the name of creating and research and totally losing track of what it is that you're doing. So the first mode is research and down in point four, I'll share a really easy way to research without even having to scroll on your for you page, your dashboards, your explore and getting lost. Cool. Who wants that workflow? So the first one is research research. The second is planning. That's right. Research does have to come to an end. <laughs> okay. The third is actually writing. You do at some point just have to write. Now this is an important one. Number four is editing. The reason that writing and editing are separated is because they require opposite sides of your brain. Can I get an amen in the chat from anyone who feels that? My husband and I are actually writing a fantasy fiction book that is the start of a series. And then I'm also writing um, a bipolar detective series, which is really, really fun. It's whodunit style. And it has taught me so much about the importance of just writing that first draft and then going through and, and making it better. You cannot do both at the same time or you will never get anything done. Okay. So three is writing, four is editing. Then five is designing or choosing creatives. That might be photos. That might be graphics. It could be made in Canva. It could be sent to a designer. You might not use any graphics. That's cool too. Six is scheduling. Schedule it all out. Seven is analyzing. And I actually like to do this in real time. So especially during Black Friday, we've got like the baseline posts prepared, scheduled, ready to go. But then if I notice that we got a lot of emails with this uh, particular question, I'm going to go in and make sure that that question is addressed in the next day's posts, emails, etc. Cool. So analyzing and step eight is tweaking. Without analyzing, we can't tweak. I didn't say twerk. I said tweak. Okay. Beautiful. Now you can organize your day by blocking out specific times for those different activities. And this prevents tasks from taking longer than necessary and helps in prioritizing the most important tasks, as well as keeping you sequentially on pace. Cool. Who here is like, I never thought of the fact that it takes eight different phases and modes in order to create this. I'll drop the eight. Um, Metrical, can you drop the eight in a row so anyone can grab them? There are the eight in a row. Okay, who's going to try this? Because this right here saves you so much time and you can do a lot more like a week's worth or a month's worth in one session. Fantastic. I love it. All right. Ah. All right. Drink your water, folks. Yeah. It's dry season. <laughs> All right. The next major workflow is kind of fun. And I'm going to teach um, a way that I like to handle this workflow. And then I'm going to teach you some really cool specifics for marketing kind of strategy that is neat. You guys ready for it? This is so fun. All right, so we're going to talk about writing content workflows. Um, when it comes to writing, I 10 out of 10 recommend exiting out of the internet as much as possible when you are writing from your brain, okay? The reason for this is because the internet is so distracting for everyone. You can have all the discipline in the world and suddenly everything else calls to you. Um, I consider myself a decently disciplined person and I am highly distractible still. So I personally like to write in like pages app or Scrivener or even my notes app on my Apple, um, writing offline 
is so good for you to actually shut off distractions for the first part. And it prevents you from uh, spending tons of time kind of getting nothing done. Who needs to try this? Drop a yes. Um, I actually like to sometimes set a timer. I think that this can be really, really effective. So I do this a lot in writing emails, writing like my Black Friday, Cyber Monday promotions for social, et cetera. Um, even for writing like a, a few scenes in a book, I'll turn off the internet. I use Scrivener for that reason because you can just write and there's no internet access required. And what's fantastic is it will shock you how much you can get done when you just write offline. Now, this is a key. Who here is an author? I'm super curious. Or by the way, if you're an aspiring author, you're still an author. Um, <laughs> this is super important <laughs> to keep in mind. Um, first drafts aren't good for anyone. This is so normal. The first draft of an email is rarely the end result. The first draft of a social post is rarely amazing. Um, it is okay to just write words. I won't use the words that I use to describe my first drafts because they're not super appropriate. But anytime I write <laughs> the first draft of anything, I'm like, just get the crappy words out. Just get yep. the crappy words out. And that's what you want to do in this sprint writing mode. Cool. Who's going to try this? Now, I'm going to share some really fun things that you can do. These are some of the marketing strategies I use in Q4 and holiday season that are fantastic for tweaking an email about an offer. And there are four ways to tweak it. Okay, so the first we're going to talk about e-commerce. Okay, so things with more of a nice to have or a physical presence or something like that. I do want to answer this question. Is Metrical good for someone that has an e-com business that works alone? Yes. Especially when you apply my domino content strategy where you create on one platform and then repurpose it to all the others. Mm -hmm. It's fantastic. Then the rest are just free views, which is amazing. Um, and you don't have to have a team to use Metrical. If anything, it kind of is like a, a step before a team and a step to amplify a team. So that's where it works best. All right. <clears throat> so for e-commerce, there are two things that I like to focus on. Now, I've run a lot of Q4 and marketing campaigns for clients over the years, uh, and I've learned a lot. We've had a lot of successful campaigns and I've also seen a lot of failed campaigns as well. And I really truly learned that an offer alone is never enough. Drop a yes if you needed this reminder. When it comes to Christmas, when it comes to Black Friday, when it comes to any holiday in Q4, <clears throat> the offer alone is almost never enough. Mm -hmm. I wonder if I'm going to have a voice by the end of today. We're going to have to find out. <laughs> All right. So when it comes to physical products where there is something that is a physical representation of the offer, really and truly, um, there are two things that I like to look at and craft my content around. E-commerce is physical products that are sold online. And those two angles that I like to put stuff through, and I'm going to share examples of this, are pain points and pleasures. Okay. So for example, and I'm actually going to break down how I would work this out. You guys cool with me sharing some specific examples of this? Because I think this is pretty dang neat. So I'm going to share my screen with you. Do -do -do. All right. So um, real fast, when it comes to books, this is pretty cool. Um, tropes either fit pain points or pleasures and sometimes both, which I think is so cool. So this directly speaks to books as well. Okay. So we have, uh, here's what I'm going to do. If I want to send out five emails related to my orange and cinnamon face wash for the holidays. 
before I write these emails, the first thing I'm going to do is craft either five pain points or five pleasure points, right? I'm going to do pain points. Stop. Stops acne. That's a big pain point for face wash, right? Mm -hmm. Another dull skin. Another might be expensive skincare routines. That's a serious pain point. Mm -hmm. Maybe I solve. Uh, don't know what to get my girlfriend, best friend, sister, mom for Christmas. And another pain point might be every face wash has on animals. So now I'm going to write my emails with the lens individually of the pain points. Drop a yes if this is a helpful way to think of this. So okay. suddenly, <laughs> Aniston, go ahead. <laughs> no, I love that. That's, that's really helpful, especially because I write emails every day. <laughs> yes. So now you get to just tweak kind of what the baseline messaging is to first and foremost talk about the pain point and then how you solve the pain point. So this is a really fantastic way to really and truly make sure that you are hitting on all the different points in the holidays and Q4. Who loves this? So this is something I do. I do this with pain points all the time. Now there's a second type of angle that we might use, or rather two types of angles that we might use. And this is more in like the education space, the ebook space, the non-physical space, anyone in these spaces. So these two are objections and desires. Okay. Now I'm just going to tell you, I love both of these, but when you write your social posts, your emails, etc. I always start with emails because I find that it's easy to grab snippets for social from an email. It's way easier than trying to expand a social post into an email. Um, when you write to objections and you either anticipate or know the objections that are coming, oh my goodness, it is an absolute game changer. People feel like you are inside of their head in a wonderful way. They're like, oh, how did you know I was going to ask that today? I literally was just thinking like, is there's no payment plan and I've already like blah, 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 right? So write to objections. And this is a fantastic way to grow. So we might do the same thing. Um, five emails related to the content ebook bundle. Okay. I think that this is why re the research element is so important because you're not going to know how to really target or you know speak with your audience if you don't know what they're struggling with what they're looking for um what issues they have day to day and how your product can directly help them impact them you know etc mm -hmm. okay so i'm writing these i don't have tons of money great the ebook bundle is only 27 and it also gives you a hashtag bank or whatever. I don't have tons of time. Perfect. This will take you less than a weekend of reading, ideally four hours to read. You can spread it out across the next month and it'll only take you 15 minutes a day, etc. But does it work for X, Y, and Z industry? And what if it doesn't work? That's a big one. So you can tailor your emails for these things in particular. Um, the hashtags was just an example for that one. All right. Writing for pain points and objections is generally speaking going to perform better and keeps you from, in many ways, can keep you from 
getting in trouble with the FTC, SEC, et cetera. When you write to desires, especially in any industry that makes claims or big promises, that's where you can get a little bit in trouble. So just be careful with that and study the FTC and SEC's regulations. Drop a yes if you promise, promise, promise to do so. Do you mind explaining just the FTC and SEC? For mm -hmm. Yeah, so the FTC is the Federal Trade Commission. And basically what they're doing is they are making sure that businesses and influencers are not making outrageous claims that are unbased, um, which is really, really uh, interesting. What that means is basically like, if you say, here are the five steps that I took to become a millionaire, that technically could be okay. But to say, um, here are the five proven steps I took to become a millionaire and they'll work for you as well. Right there, that's a claim. <clears throat> and they're making sure that people aren't getting duped basically. And it can be as simple as the wrong messaging. So you have to be really careful to make sure that your messaging is within the FTC's guidelines. Now, the SEC doesn't come into play as much, but it's the Securities and Exchange Commission. And basically they are making sure that people aren't um, being duped into investing into something that is lying to them. So if there's an investment program where the owner promises 20% returns, um, if that owner doesn't deliver in that time frame, or even sometimes if it's still in the meantime, they can get in big trouble. You probably have your own version of the FTC and the SEC in Canada as well that might be a little bit different, but they're important to study. Um, if you market to people in the US, you'll want to study these. And then if you're in like um, anything that affects body externally and internally, you kind of deal more with like the FDA. So I've had to study a lot of these regulations for many different clients, um, including like a client who claimed to be organic when she wasn't certified organic and the FDA came for her. So we had to pivot all messaging immediately. Wow. Yeah. So fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the next thing I want to share <clears throat> is how to study. <laughs> is my voice going to make it through this day? I, I don't know. know. <laughs> you got this. So fun. All right. We're going to dive into how to study what is working. Now there's two different places that I'm going to teach you to study when you're in research mode. Okay. The email link that works is the email that is well written. So I know that that sounds really vague. I've had emails that were three sentences, absolutely crush it. I've had emails that were five paragraphs, crush it. And I've had emails that were 2,500 words, crush it. It just depends on your ability to write and maintain an audience. So if you're newer to that, I recommend putting links early on in an email so that people can jump in versus like when someone has really and truly achieved mastery in copywriting and storytelling, they'll sometimes delay putting the links until nearly the end of the email. I do play with that sometimes. So I hope that helps. There are two places to learn about your audience. Find big Facebook groups where your ideal clients and customers exist. Join those groups, don't say anything. Just search for their problems and pain points by keywords, Whew. right? This is an amazing one, especially if you are an entrepreneur, it's really easy to find these groups. If you're not, you could look for moms over 30. You could look for um, homeschool families. Look for groups that are related to the keywords of your industry, and then just start to study. Set aside 30 minutes to go and read through some of like the most relevant posts and see kind of like the topics, the complaints. What are people upset about in the comments? There are some good pain points there. An easier place, but I do recommend that for learning the words that people are using to describe their pain. This is a great way to identify trends inside a metrical. So there is competitor analysis 
Okay. So I only have one competitor added right now, which is funny because I just deleted all the others recently. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look at her content. And down here, I'm going to look at her reels expand this to a hundred rows so I can see kind of the most recent stuff. I want to sort by one of these metrics, likes, comments, engagement, etc. So if I go by likes, I can learn a lot about what pain point is hitting. So this one right here, get my free ebook in my bio. What? Oh my goodness. This is amazing. <laughs> you guys, this is a resource that went viral. Isn't that incredible? So she's just sharing advice about how to generate an income. This one right here technically would be against the FTC <laughs> because it says you will make money in your sleep. Eh, ding. Okay. I just have an eye for it. Sorry. So this is still a really powerful thing that I could absolutely create. And it's one I'm totally going to model. But what this tells me is people want to know what ways they can make additional income potentially. Mm -hmm. And if the caption backs it up with get my free ebook in my bio to learn more, they're going to be like, yes, please, I need this. So another pain point that I can learn about, and she may not necessarily be like a direct competitor, but I'm learning about this. Look at this. If you're not using Instagram to make money, why not? So once again, People want to know how to make money using things that they're already using. Mm -hmm. And this is just a value packed caption. And I think she mostly just does affiliate marketing just from everything I've seen. So that's another pain point. Okay. A little specific action step. I love this. So here I can start to make a list of the pain points that seem to pull people in. Now, I probably would actually add a few more competitors that are more direct comparisons, if that makes sense. So I hope that that helps. Who's excited about using that one to save time? You can add how many on a free account and how many on premium? You can add five for each network it's available for on free and then up to 100 for premium plans. So beautiful really and the nice thing about you know adding them for the free plan too is you have five but you can make you know you can switch them around you can delete one add another one so it doesn't have to be strictly five and then it's done um you can really play around with it so perfect all right let's go ahead and take a peek at planning for black friday here we go. Is it 11.24? Today. Oh. Uh, Black Friday? Black Friday. That feels so yeah. early. I don't know why. Right? Okay. <laughs> no, it does feel early. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this is workflow number four. Uh, sorry, five. <laughs> Best times to post. Okay. This is super, super helpful. So when you are looking inside of your planner in Metrical, you can see the best times to post based on where there's the most saturation of color for each network. So this is Instagram. This is Facebook. And this is Twitter X. I like that it's gray. It feels appropriate. Okay. So one thing I want to share that is really, really big is a lot of people think that during the holidays, you shouldn't post because no one's going to pay attention. That's actually false. People, most people are miserable with family, unfortunately. It's literally what the studies say. It's why um, Thanksgiving is like actually one of the biggest drinking weeks <laughs> of the entire year. Um, I think same with Christmas, but I know it's Thanksgiving as well. So what's really wild is it's the perfect time for you to actually show up when other people are not creating and making that same assumption. People aren't checking social. Who here has caught themselves checking their social media at a family holiday at least once? Drop a yes. Or you head to the bathroom and sit on the toilet for an extra 10 minutes just to scroll on social. We all do it, right? So the truth is, especially for introverts, by the way, you can love your family and still need a break. So this is the perfect time to 
make sure that there is content scheduled and you can post it in the times when people are most likely to engage. And there's probably going to be more engagement all the way through the rest of those days. So I would post right before or right during these hot hours right here. I would do the same thing here, like right here. And that's going to keep being engaged for hours, especially if you post it right at the beginning of the best time to post. And this is an amazing time-saving workflow. Yep, yep, yep. You can also Ooh. do this on TikTok. I think your TikTok might be your personal. I think it it is. Yeah, it's personal, so I can't show my best times to post on TikTok. But if you do have a personal TikTok account, then it will show. Business, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. sorry. <laughs> mine's personal I've never changed it I don't have a plan to change it it's just worked so I'm like I'm just not gonna mess with something that's working well but yes you can utilize best times to post on TikTok and it is way easier to read than TikTok's internal mm -hmm. metrics and data and stuff so it's really really nice okay number six engagement and retargeting social ads, emails, etc. Okay, I'm going to share a couple of hacks. So this is for anyone who is advanced. Um, when you design ads, this will not resonate for everyone. Okay, this is more advanced. When you design ads that focus on engagement and add to cart actions as what you're optimizing for, you will sweep up as long as you have a converting offer because everyone else is focusing on purchase and purchase conversion. So when you go in there with add to cart ads, it is a game changer because no one else is competing for that objective. Mm -hmm. um, you can also then retarget those landing page viewers or those website viewers with retargeting ads to get the purchase. Um, I'm going to share a workflow that is fantastic for creating social media, emails, and Facebook ads that crush it over Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and holiday season for the rest of Q4. So this is a really cool charge. Go collect testimonials, ideally video, around objections desires, pain points, or pleasure, and turn them into a video carousel or edit them together for social or transcribe them and put them into emails. And suddenly you have something that is super, super powerful. This is my favorite workflow for sweeping up in Q4. So pain points, objections, Desires and pleasures. Those are the big four. All right. Who's still with me? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Beautiful. All right. Those are the six I've got. So should we open up some questions or do you have something else you want to share, Aniston? Yeah, no, let's open up for questions. Beautiful. Um, there was one at the beginning. Oh, this was just from the very beginning, but talking about approval system. Um, does the person that needs to approve it get a notification to their email or do they have to physically log into Metricool? So the person who, the reviewer, will get an email and then through the email, they'll it'll you know link to Metricool. You can log into Metricool. Um, but in order to review, yes, you need to be in Metricool, but they will get the email and then also will have that notification button um, in the My Tasks area. So... Mm -hmm. What other questions do you guys have? Drop them in the comments, chat, etc. And if not, we check out early for the holiday season. Here we go. <laughs> How would you address the pain points in carousels and posts? For example, using the ebook bundle you talked about. So Carousels, I've actually seen this done quite a bit, where each carousel slide 
is like a photo of someone and then there's a description on the photo of what their end result was highlighted in like a short quote worthy something that pops over 200 percent increase in sales mm -hmm. etc so you don't put the entire testimonial there you can add it into the caption but it's something that really grabs attention so always make sure your testimonials go most powerful second most powerful and then fourth most powerful fifth most powerful and then third most powerful that's how i like to handle carousels um when you do ads you can make the headlines of each video the poppy quote Mm -hmm. Let me see. Ooh, other ideas for reaching out to readers. Reaching out to readers really and truly comes down to amazing, varied marketing. What's wild is I've seen the exact same style of video with the same level of like marketing expertise behind it thrive for one person and absolutely flop for another. The biggest thing I've discovered is that when people try all kinds of different angles, those can work in time once you find the angles that work for you. So what I would recommend is follow different industries and try different things from those industries to see what works. Just be careful not to talk about the author process unless you are attracting authors mm -hmm. as your readers. I've seen that happen a lot of times. Yeah. Yep. That's a good point. Um, I'm assuming they're talking about Magical. When you're first connected to Magical, does it auto connect to your personal profile or is it whichever one you're signed into? So it will be whichever one you're signed into, but you need to connect it to a Facebook page. So keep that in mind. Um, does Metrical have an option for reusing posts? So there are kind of a, a two different options with this. Um, inside the analytics section, when you see a list of the posts, um, if you know, a caption is done really well or et cetera, you can copy that caption and then, you know, copy it to the clipboard and then go to schedule content and copy that same caption in. You can tweak it. Um, or you can use Autolist, which help create a constant flow of content. So you can turn it on to um, recycle through it so that it constantly is um, posting content for you. Um, I work in the automotive sales industry and I find it hard to have ads that work for drawing people in. Do you think posting testimonials and reviews would be better than just a social media post? So automotive sales is a little bit different for several reasons. There, one thing that is super important to keep in mind with all marketing is anyone who says, this is a universal truth just have like a little yellow flag pop up in your head because very rarely is something actually universal. So here's an exception. Number one, it is locally based. So that immediately limits the audience. Number two, it is not something that people just randomly decide to do most of the time unless they have bipolar. <laughs> In case anyone's like, oh, that's so offensive. No, I have it. <laughs> um, number three, depending on what cars you sell, it may or may not be an attractor or deterrent to potential buyers. So when it comes to automotive sales, it's actually something that I recommend doing a little bit differently. You can either go with short form video and kind of create um, an attractive character team where people are creating really funny videos that make people like, oh my gosh, I want to see that dealership. And that is a long game. Um, but the reason I say that even the type of vehicles could make a difference is like, you could literally tell me we have 
all the brand new Teslas in at 75% off. And I'd be like, no, thanks. <laughs> like I, you could tell me I'll give you a free Tesla tomorrow. And I might be like, maybe it depends on what I'm doing tomorrow. Do you know what I mean? So like, there are so many factors that come into play with that. Um, I actually think if you were to run ads, running ads on marketplace specifically would be the best thing because a lot of people do look for cars on marketplace. I actually use marketplace a lot for furniture and I have friends who have used it for cars as well, but I, I think that there are better local initiatives in general, but having just a general social media presence could be good. Mm hmm. Um, question from Zach. You said you were running three retargeting ads real fast. That totally depends on the offer, the audience, and what time of year it is. We'll run anywhere from one to 12 retargeting ads. And by the way, it's good to see you. <laughs> we're friends on Facebook. So, um, our top performing retargeting ads are annoyingly simple. <laughs> it bothers me all the time. The creatives aren't as simple. They're either those photos in a carousel or um, videos in a carousel. Um, sometimes we'll use simple creatives, but most of the time, no. Um, but the copy itself is almost always super simple. Hey, I noticed you're about to join X, Y, and Z and then left the page without committing. I wanted to share this with you. And then result of a client. Now it's your turn. Link. Um, the shorter, usually the better closing soon. Join me in the offer name that has helped over 15,000 people on their journey of blank. I've saved you a spot link. So the simple retargeting ads seem to perform better. Mm -hmm. Yep. Next one's, I think, uh, next one's for you. Emily joined, have so much fun. This is going to save you so much time. <laughs> um okay this one i'm actually not sure about i currently have a paid metrical plan that i've been holding on to tailwind for pinterest smart loop does metro cool have what i need to dump tailwind i am not completely sure what pinterest smart loop i know that our pinterest capabilities um is something that we're definitely improving we want to improve on um, and add some more features to that. So stay tuned because I'm not entirely sure, but follow back up with us if you have some more specific questions because this is something that is definitely very interesting. Mm -hmm. Next one. Can you describe the feature better that will go through your content and repost? I didn't know about that. I think auto lists is what Shelly's asking about. Yes. Mm -hmm. Let me show you. Let me do a little demo of it. I'll do. It. Okay. So basically, auto list will appear in the same section as the planning. Um, so then you'll click over here into auto lists. So for example, we have one for Twitter that we constantly have going out. Um, this is great too. You can link either your blog or if you have. Um, a podcast, you can link the RSS feed, but basically you'll choose the times that the content will be going out. Um, so the times and days and then where you're posting to. So, you know, if you want to, we have this for Twitter, but if you want to post to Facebook, Instagram, whatever it is, and then we have a long list. So we have almost like 280 posts. But basically, you can continue to add content um, and then, you know, so for example, we have some information about what the, our brand summary looks like in our analytics. Um, so content that's more evergreen that can be, you know, resourceful kind of at any point. Um, and then if you want to you know, you can see this is really long. So then up here, if you want to repeat it so that it, once it is done going at the bottom of the list, then it'll start at the top. So this is a way to repurpose content by spacing it out in time. So you're not just, you know, repurposing the same content week after week, um, but spreading it out to, you know, now we have 
280 posts that give this time until the next con, you know, the, it'll recycle through. Um, because in reality, no one will probably know what you tweeted 200 tweets ago. So, <laughs> or even 30, to be honest. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that is a great feature um, for having content that's, you know, constantly going out, especially in the holiday season when everything is crazy and busy and you don't have time to schedule and you want to take a break, uh, especially on holiday days, um, you don't want to be posting. This is a great option. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Agreed. Can you post the same content to more than one social media account at the same time? Absolutely. So when you go to post content, you can highlight all of the social networks that you want to post to. Um, and then it will create almost a bulk template. So you can, let me share it again. <laughs> I didn't share it again. You can go into each, um, you can go into each post and then edit it. So if I wanted to post, let's say, Facebook, Instagram, mm -hmm. then you can go edit by network. So this is, will be the main template, but then you can tweak it to Facebook and Instagram specifically. Um, and then also our tool will, you know, give you a reminder of, okay, this is the right file size or yada, yada. Mm -hmm. So it'll make sure that everything's ready to go before it's posted. Um, and then when you post it, you can also, it'll break it up into two or however many, you know, social networks you're posting to, and you can drag them around. So if you want to post one at 12 PM and the next at 2 PM, you can uh, change it so that it doesn't go out at the same time if you don't want to. Mm -hmm. So great option as well. So good. Um, let's see. Mm, this is interesting. What if you have the same offer all the time selling an affiliate marketing course? How often do you email? I'm conscious that people might get sick of me and yet that's what I promote. Um, okay, so ideally you're not promoting your offer every time you email, but most companies can email once a week. Um, more like brick and mortar, like plumbers, <laughs> car sales, usually more of once a month, unless they have new inventory and they have like a segment of their list that says, let me know when you have new inventory, but you can provide value to your list as often as you can create value. So I email my list three to five times a week, but I'm not always making an offer. Um, and that's been a really big game changer for building amazing relationships, for having people be excited to get my emails. My open rates are over 30% with 350,000 plus on my email list, which is pretty unheard of in this industry. And it's because I'm constantly just like, I want to add as much value as I can and build relationship. Um, that's kind of the key. That's actually the secret sauce to making an amazing community online. So you can email a lot more than you think, but you don't need to make your offer consistently. Mm -hmm. I think Do I have a great? Oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. A great point of this that you kind of brought up earlier is breaking down those pain points and you know those pleasures of. So it doesn't feel like you're saying the same thing over and over again. If that makes sense, mm -hmm. breaking it up into different areas of how you know the affiliate marketing course can help them, um, so that you're not feeling like okay, you know they're sick of me. They've heard this. Um, so that you can angle it a few different ways. Mm -hmm. um, does Rachel have a link for Metricool? I do, but I don't make anything from it as an affiliate. So you benefit from it when you use it. Mm -hmm. It's uh, code Rachel and you get 30 days of premium Metricool usage for free. Yes. 
go try it out. Um, we really recommend, especially now with the content approval system, mm -hmm. um, you know, trying this out with your team or your client or a friend for 30 days for free um, is really, really awesome. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? I hope this has been helpful for all of you. I know that personally, this has been really nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um for emails for writing um i'm actually also in well very early stages of writing a book but it's so hard to i think the editing process is the hardest for me um just the idea that when i sit down and write i feel like it has to be perfect every time mm -hmm. um so it's hard to get past that but then once you go back and you start to edit it i'm always like oh Okay, <laughs> this is why yeah. I write my first draft because <laughs> the second one is always better. <laughs> uh huh. I know that feeling all too well. <laughs> well, thank you everyone for joining us. This was amazing, and I'm excited to see how Q4, how you implement these time flows, time saving workflows into your Q4 plans and holiday. It'll be amazing. Yes. Thank you, everyone. Have a great weekend. Happy holidays. And yeah, make sure to um, watch this back. It'll live on our YouTube channel. So you'll have it whenever you need it. <laughs> Bye for now.